distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my colleagues, and I will tell you why I call them my colleagues. I said earlier that I'm a student of the Basie University in Abuja, where I'm currently studying law. <laughs> so I go to class like you go to class. I go to class at 9 and I close at 6, and then go to work at 6 and close at 10. <laughs> if not, I won't receive my salary. <laughs> They, they, you can take me to court for not working, but at least I work nearly every day. Uh, this lecture will be interactive, or this discussion will be interactive. We either make it conversational, in which case you will contribute, or I just read what you have on paper, and then you can discuss it. Which of them do you want? Conversation. And I'll tell you why I say conversation. Conversation in the sense that I, I know, the only thing I don't know here is the history of railway, because I wasn't there when it started. <laughs> but at least I know the rest. And I will try to obey, I will tell you why we call it the tyranny of the teachers, the tyranny of the lecturers. I scored 29 over 100 in a, a, a course at the, university, at the base university. Uh, what was that? International Humanitarian Law. And I said, for Christ's sake, I was an A student during the coursework, coursework 71. How did I fail the exam? And you know what I call the talent of the lecturers? They have what they call marking, and marking scheme, they put other things that they didn't teach me in the university. <laughs> <laughs> Introduction, what's my business? You ask me what is international material, I define it. So don't tell me. I will tell you the history of what's my business with the history. You just ask me what is international humanitarian law. So a man asks you to identify, for those of you who are law students, uh, what do you call it? Uh, facts in issue. What does it mean? You know, tell me what part, tell me you know, from this case, this is, tell me what, the facts in issue, is it not? So I said, that's the fact in issue. He said, no, I should I define what fact in issue is, the, what, what uh, in evidence act, which section of it in the, what's my business with that? <laughs> but you know lecturers, if they say you've not passed, you have not passed, you can't go to police, you will not go, you go anywhere. <laughs> so, so you better obey the lecturers. And that's the spirit in which University of Portacourt students then used to fear our lecturers. So I will start to say that you can read the introduction by yourself, because it's there, right? So you can afford to go to the history of the, when the railway was established, it's right there. If you open to page, if you have the, this in, open to page 23. You see how many kilometers of railway were constructed by the colonial masters. For those of you who don't have, please can they give them, I thought the university, if you did this, you should, be, you should have enough copies that will go around. Ah, that's unfair. Then I have to go to the, I have to go. Then I have to go to the introduction. Then we can start the conversation, right? If you go to, for those of you who have, I'm sure most of you don't have it, so the, the history of Nigerian Railway Corporation is, is, is there where, they, where we were told that um, no, it's good to be a public, uh, public servant. You don't, you don't write, you just sit at home, they write for you, you come and read it. <laughs> <laughs> you see on page 30, I think so. Is it projected? Oh, okay. So go to, go to the first page. No, that's not the first page. Okay, so, well, I, I'm sure that, go to the next page, I'm sure that you, this is just what, how the contents of the work paper is. Um, most of you know that. Without transportation, there may likely not be an economy. How many economists agree with me? How many economists agree with me? Okay, because it's like, it's like your, the blood you have in your system, right? If that blood is not there, will you live? It conveys I'm not a doctor, but it does, the, uh, the blood conveys quite a lot to your brain, to your all parts of your body. The same thing with transportation. What most people don't know is that almost everything you do is transportation. When you flush your toilet, what happens? Huh? Transporting from the toilet is in, down to... So the moment you don't have that process of piping, you get the point? It goes to nowhere and you do not live in your house, you run away. The stench in that house will kill you. Even the stench itself is air transportation. It's conveyed. 
come back from the toilet, you are known. Most people don't know, when, I, I don't know if they teach transportation here, that even crude oil is transported, not by a ship, from the ground. You know that? It is. The piping, the, even the gas, you can pipe gas from Port Harcourt to Kaduna. That process of piping is, it says, what is it? So transportation in definition is just logistics. Even you're walking, I hope you know you're transporting yourself when you walk. Right? That's a mode of transportation. And that's how human beings started. They started by walking. Then you saw other means like bicycle. Technology came forward. You saw, even before ships, we had canoes. Most of you don't think about it at all. You just think transportation, aeroplane, cars, buses. No, no, no. There are other very cool forms that started first before technology evolved the other forms. So basically, you cannot live without transportation. Literally everything you do involves transportation. Therefore, it's a key element to economic development in the, in the country, in the world. And it creates opportunities for other forms of economic activities. Therefore, you can't even create employment if you don't create logistics, right? One of the reasons, and I'll give you that as an example before I move away from transportation, uh, I mean definition of transportation and the categorization of which types of transportation. One example was, I was sitting one day in the cabinet, and then Audu, who was then minister for agri, rushed to me in the cabinet and said, we are in trouble. I said, what is trouble? The cost of tomatoes in uh, Lagos is rising astronomically. And the only way to stop it, Amici, is you. I said, yeah, what's my business with tomatoes? He said, just give me one week of railway from Lagos to Kano. Let me move tomatoes from Kano to Lagos, and the price will come down. And I called the MD of railway. Once that happened, the price of tomato did what? Crash, right? So when the price crashed, what happened? Who can tell me what happened? The economies, demand and supply. Once the supply exceeded the... And the price came down. I'm into, I'm into poultry farming. I was so happy before President Buhari liberalized, liberalized the, what do you call this? Listen the importation of parent, grandparent stock. Because there, they wouldn't have enough grandparent stock, there was scarcity. So you, not, and because there was scarcity, we that sold parent stock, because grandparent stock produced parent stock, we were making money. But once Buhari came and liberalized it, supply exceeded demand, and he put some of us out of business. It's not fair. Under the force, under the force, who had the monopoly of importing grandparent stock, so that's what transportation is is about. And then you, well, this all we'll talk about population of Nigeria. Do we have enough transportation network? That's not correct. We don't have enough. All the noise about Lagos traffic is not because you are too many. You are not. It is just that you don't have enough roads. Neither do you have enough vehicles or means of transportation. If you say it's a lie, I can take up a project of asking Niwa to introduce more uh, maritime transport services in Lagos and your transport, your traffic will just go down. Because you know that Lagos is surrounded by water. The more vessels we buy and put inside the water and people begin to use it, knowing that, like, I don't go to Papa with vehicles, never. Because I'm minister for what? All I do is, Niwa, put, put for me a vessel at Marina. I drive to Marina, come down, enter the vessel. Five minutes. I mean, Papa, you get the point? And I'm gone. While you are still struggling for two hours. So, <laughs> the reason why we've not done it is basically, and that's where partially I support Lagos State Government. It is the business of Lagos State or, or State Government to move you around. Our business is to make the policies. But even though they've not, they, ha they hardly have won the case, and that's because they're approaching it the wrong way. If they go to court and say, look, well, maritime is federal government business. But we're saying the operation of maritime can be shared by federal government and state government. They're not asking for that. They're asking to say maritime is also our business. And we say, no, no. By constitution, it is on the exclusive list. It's our business, not yours. We determine, except where, and that's the that judgment. 
except we had a, if it is water does not leave Lagos. But any water that stretches from Lagos to Ogun State belongs to the federal government. So you can see the role, and I've defined it, the role the transport sector plays in economic development, in your GDP and all that. Go to the next page. Me, right? Eh? Well, we've talked about all this you should know. Aviation, and this is not, it's not, ex it's not exclusive. Beyond aviation, railroad, and all that. But my, they all fall into these four categories. All of what I define for you fall into these categories. Except with one you don't bother about, like transportation by pipes and all that, gas transportation, they may not be here. But there are also other forms of transportation. Now, what, what distinguishes our ministry from the rest of the ministries? and from the past ministers is real transportation true, right? And that's what if someone does to come and be here. To tell you what they refer to as revolution, which I don't know about. To tell you the networks, I can tell you that in five minutes. How do we get the money? I can tell you that in five minutes. And which way? The challenges. The challenges, you are the problem. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you why you are the problem. Move to the next, let me see. Well, this ministry, forget the ministry, just go ahead. Uh, this is ministry, go ahead. Go to the next page. Okay, so I'll tell you that the news about the Ministry of Transport is all about, it's all about railway. I'm not saying that's the only department in the Ministry of Transport. I'm saying that's what people refer to as revolution. That's what people say, uh, oh, this government is about transportation, it's about railway and all that. And you say that because Maybe it wasn't there before. It was there, but it was abandoned, and the government decided to take it up and construct railways. Now, there are, I will take, having done this part of the production, I would like to move to the next, so I will hurry and allow you to co have that conversation. Okay, fine, stop there. You asked me about network. If you had this, if you had this, I would have told you to go to page, page 36, but since you don't have it, let me explain it. Basically, by the time we took over, the colonial masters had built about 3,200 or 3,500 uh, tracks, kilometers of tracks. And they are called the Western Line and the Eastern Line. Western Line, where, the, where, 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 where when we go to question answer. But how many of you can tell me where the Western Line is? Western Line, we say it would be interactive. Okay, Western Line is Lagos. Kano, Funtua, up to Sokoto, up to uh, Kaura and Amod, all those areas. That's how they, they constructed it. Basically, for economic purposes, to move goods. Most of you think that rail transport is about passengers. No, 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 no. It's about movement of cargoes from point A to point B. So for the, for the colonial masters, it's basically to move economic produce from the north to the water to export out of the country. So you, you saw how Nigeria developed around that time. There are people who came from the West and lived in Kano and lived in Funtua. The, 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 the economic activities of Nigeria then centered around such economic, such rail, rail lines. And it created the avenue for unity. The Eastern line is from Portacourt to Meduguri. So if it's Portacourt to Meduguri, you will pass Omar here, you will pass Enugu, Makodi, up to Meduguri. Then, that's where it stopped. Now, President Obasanjo came forward. They ran it. Problem, then, no money. So they were not funding Nigerian Railway Corporation. But I asked a question why couldn't they have run it in a commercial form that would make them fund themselves? I, I have no answer. Maybe government intervention. You know, those days, the minister can come and say, where are you going to? You say, well, we have today morning, this morning, 8 a.m., we are leaving Lagos to go to Kano. He said, no, 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 no. Carry my family. Drop them in Funtua. Don't pass through Kano. Maybe government intervention. Maybe. But they were not properly funded. And I can also assume that they, they didn't run properly. Because if they ran properly, they should be able to fund themselves. And that's where I'm heading to. Before I leave, I want to leave behind a railway corporation that can 
generate its own money. Like what we're doing now. <laughs> I told the, I told the, uh, the, vi the deputy vice chancellor, who is asking on behalf of the vice chancellor, this story. But currently, we are funding Lagos Ibad from the money we make from uh, Ka Ka um, Kaduna Abuja. So are we also funding the type of worry from the money we make from Kaduna Abuja? And I'll tell you why I told him that story. If the money we are making from Lagos Ibadan was sufficient and there was not enough money in Kaduna Abuja and we use money from Lagos to fund Kaduna Abuja, we would say, hey, Fulani, Fulani headsmen, we are using that money. <laughs> we are using Yoruba money to fund Fulani headsmen. But see, no noise. No noise. Nobody has said, why are you using the money from Kaduna Abuja to fund uh, Etabewari and, uh, and uh, Lagos Ibadan? But you enter, hey, wonderful train. Hey, it's so beautiful. Air condition. It's an, it's the money coming from Kaduna Abuja is enjoying air condition. You, you get the point. Lagos Ibadan will make more money in the future, more than Kaduna Abuja. But current, why is it not making money now? We just have four trains per day. By the time we increase it to 16, it will supersede the money we are getting from um, the money we are getting from Kaduna, Abuja. So, currently, in terms of network, what we have, we have the network from Lagos to Kano, according to the modernization program, Lagos to Kano. What have we constructed out of this? Whether 1,200 or 1,500, Lagos to Kano. What we've constructed so far is we've done Lagos to Kano. We are supposed to continue immediately from Ibadan to Kano, mm -hmm. but up till now, we are yet to get the loan from, from China. And China has become a bit difficult globally in terms of giving out loans. So we are beginning to look towards Europe. But what have, what beyond Lagos Ibadan, we are now constructing from the budget yet. We are constructing Kano to Kaduna from the budget. We've released close to $200 million to them already. In fact, more than 200, we have gone close to about 300 and something million dollars out of the 1.2 billion dollars for the construction of the this. So, in, from from the budget alone, we've started funding Kaduna Kano. While still negotiating a new loan from um, Ebadan to to Kano. When we get the loan, we will commence the construction of Ebadan to Kano. But currently, the network is Lagos to Kano. In that Lagos to Kano. You bear off at Mina. Okay, there are two points that are spoiled. One of the spoils was introduced by us, this government. Don't forget, I said this is President Obasanjo's modernization program. But I'll tell you our intervention. Our intervention is <coughs> from is it Oshobo or Obomosho, one of those places, to Ekiti. There is a new line from Obomosho or Oshobo, one of them to Ekiti for $500 million. Now, when you get to Mina, that is, but that one was there, there's a line from Mina to Abuja. That's a spore from Mina to Abuja and from Abuja to Kaduna. The actual listen is from Mina to Kaduna and onwards. That's the first network. The second network is what we call the central line. The central line is from Abuja to Itabe. There are two spots, one to Lokoja, one to Baro. It goes from there to Itabe, and then there's already an existing line from Itabe to Wari, but we'll then take it from Wari to the sea. And that's what we're battling with now, because we've not seen where to locate the seaport where we're going to build. Then there's another line called the Eastern Line. The colonial masters introduced the Eastern Line, which is Lagos, no, Potakot to, to Meduguri. We have introduced about nearly three spores from the Potakot to Meduguri. There's one spore from Potakot to Weri. In fact, in the standard gauge uh, design, it goes from Potakot to Weri, or Weri to Newi, Newi to Oka. But in the narrow gauge, what we did was Potakot to Weri and stop there and continue from Potakot to Aba, Aba to Umahia, Umahia to Enugu, Enugu to. There are two spots at Enugu. There's a spot from Enugu to Abakaliki, which is the capital of Eboin. 
and another spore from Enugu to Oka. Then it continues from Enugu to Makodi, Makodi to Lafia, Lafia to Jos. I think around Jos, there's a line that goes from Kafanchan to join Kaduna. But it continues from Jos to Gombe, no, to Bauchi, Bauchi to Gombe. We have introduced a new spore from Gombe to Damakuru and onwards to Gashua, then from Gombe or from Damakuru to Borono, which is to Meduguri. That's the end of the Eastern, Eastern line. There's a new, <coughs> excuse me, there's a new line which was not part of the uh, colonial development that starts from Lagos to Calabar. That's south south. That's why I tell people who continue to shout every day, oh, you're not giving us away. I say, why is it that in the south south we're not shouting? They we're not shouting. But there's a line that the flag is supposed to con construct from Lagos to Calabar. That there is only one spore. In fact, there's no spore. The other spot that was there, I've almost removed it because it's expensive for me and it's for now not, for now it is not needed, it's not necessary. That's a spot from Calabar to Budu Ranch. I call it big men past time. Big men are looking, they're looking for, I want to go and rest somewhere, you, when you get to Calabar, you take train. So we're funding the big men to go and enjoy themselves in, uh, how, much are they pay, how much are they going to pay? Is it, it's subsidized. Rail transport is subsidized. I hope you know that. And I'll give you a quick example. From Wari to Itabe is 2,500. Right? You come down at Itabe, you join bus or taxi, air conditioned bus or taxi from that point to Abuja, 30,000 naira. How much is that? 5,500. If you enter night bus to Abuja, it's 20,000. If you go by air, it's 60,000. So, Buhari's government, that some of you don't like, is giving you back about 40,000 40, in your pocket. If you are those who go, <laughs> if you are those who go by air, he has put fifty twenty thousand in your pocket. If you are those who go by road, he has put about uh, fourteen thousand five hundred in your pocket. But most people don't remember that. How many of you go by road to Ibadan? I think Ibadan is two thousand five hundred by rail. But how much is by road? People must have found out our one thousand five hundred though. <laughs> <laughs> and you are still abusing us. So every day with that she wants another 500, you put it in your pocket, and then you come out and abuse us. Oh, 1,000. Oh, I thought you said 4,000. One. Okay, but look, let's, let's even look at what I can refer to as the political economy of, of the rail, rail transportation from, listen, you know, the political economy from, of the rail transportation from Lagos to Ibadan, and that of road transportation from Lagos to Ibadan. The politics of it is that at least the Yorubas are happy that they have rail line, is it not? <laughs> Why not? Can I allow me to finish now? I say political economy. And in that, in that, you have not built the cost of paying police bribe on the road. You, have not, you see, that's why big men use uh, Kaduna Abuja. They are scared of kidnappers now. So the kidnapping economy is built into the money we make. <laughs> the, the money we make in the rate of joining in Kaduna Abuja. I'm sure too, you people have not built the possibility that one day, you don't know whether they will kidnap you on that place. <laughs> we don't know. So, but so far you've sorted out police. You've not put in the religious aspect of the, the political economy of road transportation from Lagos to Ibadan. How many of you know that there's a religious aspect to it? How many of you see, see why we're University of Portugal graduates? Just this MFM or the DIM blocking road, you spend three, four hours. How many of you know that? Three, four hours, people like us who are slightly impatient will get very mad and wonder why the Lagos State government or Gusei government didn't push this for right inside, inside, inside the forest where they can go and park. But if you're going to Ibadan by road, these are things you will suffer. Once you enter our train, 
have air condition, nobody is sweating around near, nobody is sweating around near you. We are coming up with our internet facility. You're watching our television free of charge. You have food to buy. <laughs> <laughs> you, have, you have food in the train, right? No, there, there must be food. What I don't know is whether it's free or you will buy it, but there will be food. <laughs> there will be food. You have toilets. That, that's the 2,500. You go to the toilet if you want to. Everything you need to, you need to do. So it's quite expensive to do the railways in the manner that people want it. But currently, what you have, currently what you have are these, that's the network. You ask for the financing, and I will take you through the financing. The first one I've told you is Lagos Calabar. Lagos Calabar is currently $11.1 billion. Lagos Ibadan is $2 billion. Should I wait for you to finish your this thing? So Lagos Calabar is $11.1 billion. This short man, finish quick, quick, go. Now, okay, so Lagos Ibadan is two, is $2 billion. Ibadan to Kano, $5.3 billion. But I think it will be much more than that. The actual listing of Lagos to Kano is $8.7 billion. But let's see. The savings actually comes from the fact that after Ibadan, the Chinese said they will not fund double tracks. So if you do single track alone, it becomes $5.3 billion. Because if you continue with double tracks, it will be $8.7 billion. Why did the Chinese say they will no longer fund double tracks? Economists? Economists? Don't make noise about being the first, uh, first investor, of, or investor of first choice, if you can answer this. <laughs> the reason is that the volume of trade in Nigeria is like this, very small, right? What business do you do in Nigeria? Just tell me one thing you produce in Nigeria. Huh? What are the costs? That's business. In one day, I'll move all everything you produce in Kano. One day, everything you produce in Kano, I'll move it to, to Lagos. So the volume of trade in Nigeria is very small. 30 million tons of cargo from Lagos to Kano and back. 30 million tons of cargo in a year. In two months, I will move 30 million tons of cargo. Two months. So the Chinese ask question. Arrogance. Arrogance of Nigerians. What are you building double tracks for? When you can build one uh, single track and it will move even 60 million tons of cargo. How will it function? If those of you who, okay, let us about the double track. If you have used uh, Kaduna, Abuja, if there is an oncoming train, the train going to Kaduna will be told that there is an oncoming train at Soto Station, please park, so that it will pass. So two trains can use the same single track. You don't need double. All you need is communication. So the man knows that you're coming. He knows what point to stop so that you can pass. When you pass, what does it do? It continues. And maximum time it will waste will be five minutes. So because of five minutes, I will pay another three point something billion dollars, which will be nearly how many trillions of naira in the federal government money or Nigerian people's money. The Chinese advisor, when they started, they didn't start the way we are starting now. Nigeria just starts to give us double track, give us this. Okay, it's like our airport. No plane in the daytime coming from outside the country. Now. How many, how many? If you go to Lagos Airport, it's around 6 p.m. that it starts working. So why do I have to build? Nigeria says, oh, build the airport for us, the one that like, a, like, like in New York. What's your, what's your volume of trade? Build one small ramshackle house for this small, small plane that work there. Because what drives such development is the economic activities in that country. In Nigeria, you're almost zero. You don't produce anything, even the clothes you're wearing. It's not that we're beginning to produce or further rise. So the, as far as the Chinese are concerned, they're not ready to fund you double track until there's a need for double track. Right? And that's their argument. Because actually, look at Lagos Ibadan. 
four trains in a day. So the first one takes off, then it will rest till around 12. Within 12 and 8, what happened to the track? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And you're happy to have double track. So that's the reason. So I've given you the, I've given you the, the financing. I've told you that Lagos Ibadan, Lagos Calabar, or Lagos, no, Lagos Ibadan is 2 billion, Ibadan to Kano 5.3, hoping that they won't force us to do double track. Then uh, Lagos Calabar 11.1, uh, Potako Meduguri has two kinds of funding, Potako Meduguri. Because we are looking for funds, we now agree that they should do, uh, what is it called? They should do, they should reconstruct the narrow gauge. In the reconstruction of the narrow gauge, is $3.020 billion. That's the cost. But while they are reconstructing the narrow gauge, the president has also approved the standard gauge. The standard gauge is about nearly $12 billion. Because it's about 2,000 kilometers of rail. Don't forget there are additions, there are new spots that we've added to it. So it gets to about 2,000 kilometers of, of rail. So if it's standard gauge, you're talking about $12,000 or $12 billion. If it's just the rehabilitation of another gauge, but it will increase. Why did I say it will increase? It will increase because at the time we, ta we, we looked at the cost at $3.020 billion, there was no uh, Enugu to Oka and Enugu to Abakleki was not there. Uh, why is the addition again? There's huge pressure from those in, uh, in Yola. If we add Yola to skyrocket, that's the construction. Then there is the, the Abuja to Itabe, and then from Wari to the seaport. It's $3.9 billion. That's the central lines. The central line, the addition to it is $3.9 billion. I think these are, these are the costs. You won't. So you are putting pressure. You are putting pressure on the economics of railway construction. Why? What determines railway construction is economics. How many tons of cargoes can I convey from the Potako Seaport to Enugu? That will determine whether I will construct railway from Potako Seaport to Enugu or I will construct from Potako to Newi based on the volume of trade. And if you ask me to make that decision, Newi will be the first place because Newi is becoming the industrial nerve center of the Igbo kingdom after Onisha. And Onisha doesn't produce anything. Onisha is just a trade center. That's what it is. So if you allow me, as minister for, for transport, if you allow me, my decision will be to do rail from Potako to where? Newi, go there and see industrialization. Finally, what do we call it? The first way forward is to allow the economy to determine the construction of railway. If you cannot, please allow us to go. God bless you.